All right, today is a pretty insane topic because honestly, people can judge for themselves. OnlyFans is under fire after a private set of lawsuits got leaked to the media for allegedly bribing Facebook employees, now called Meta, which is the stupidest name I've ever heard and I refuse to unironically call them that. OnlyFans was allegedly bribing Facebook employees to put their competitors on a terrorism watch list. That's kind of evil, if true. And today I want to dig in on what exactly these lawsuits are and why this entire thing being made public is evidence of a far greater issue, well and truly beyond the individual corporate brutality of OnlyFans. First things first, there are multiple lawsuits. I've only seen one of them myself. I'm not actually sure the others are publicly available right now, but there are cases regarding this issue in California at a state level, Florida at a state level, and California at a federal level, I believe as well. I could be wrong on that, the story was only reported after a leak happened anyway, so it's not like there's a hefty repository on all this at the moment, but here's the lawsuit that I do have, which effectively outlines the case thus far. The series of lawsuits dates back to November of 2021, I believe. This is not a new development per se, however, it wasn't until August of 2022 that news officially broke. That kind of secrecy, at least to me, indicates that this is not an attack vector aimed at the court of public opinion. These lawsuits were not a PR stunt to galvanize a fan base. These lawsuits are more likely, again, in my opinion, serious accusations with some degree of weight and some degree of proof, and a legitimate battle over the issue itself. Either way, true or untrue, these lawsuits have granted us an incredibly interesting window into the reality of social media control. Here's the basic summary. It is alleged in these lawsuits that OnlyFans participated in a targeted and sustained campaign through bribery to place competing models on competing platforms on a terrorism watch list that restricted their social media growth, strangling the competition outright, which inexorably led to OnlyFans being the dominant platform that emerged. These accusations center around 2017, 2018, and 2019, but to truly understand the broader implications at play here, we need some background. First, we need to know precisely what list these models were allegedly placed on. OnlyFans was supposedly bribing Facebook employees to put specific adult entertainment models on some form of online content terrorism watch list, but how does that list actually function? The list in question is GIFCT, the Global Internet Forum to Counter Terrorism, and GIFCT was founded in 2016-2017 by a coalition of social media and technology giants, Facebook, Microsoft, Twitter, and YouTube. By extension, YouTube means Google. The initiative was aimed at curbing terrorist behavior, funded by these four industry giants, and pursuing that end, they developed a hashing system. Now, keep in mind, I'm not an expert on the technology, but a couple hours of research on the subject and some poking around on their website have shown that they effectively construct a digital fingerprint of online media and then use that fingerprint to shadow ban across a wide range of their proprietary systems, platforms, and frameworks. Once identified, terrorist content is throttled down across nearly all existing social media. Facebook obviously includes the Facebook platform, but also Instagram. Microsoft owns Skype, LinkedIn, and other examples of social media as well. Twitter is self-explanatory, and YouTube is one of the most popular websites on planet Earth. Between them, these companies control an enormous amount of the online world when it comes to Western society, and having developed a shared method of identifying and then disabling terrorist content, well, in a perfect world, that's a good thing, but we don't live in a perfect world. The most important thing that comes to mind for me right off the bat is how do they classify this content and who has access? From their FAQ page, we can find a number of meaningful quotes, but this one summarizes best what the process should be like. Quote, hashes of terrorist and violent extremist content that qualify to be put in the hash sharing database currently must meet a taxonomy that recognizes the original producers of the content, as well as the type of content and severity for harm, end quote. In other words, we need to have a comprehensive understanding of what the content is, who posted it, and what kind of harm it can cause before shadow banning across half the social media landscape. Now, when it comes to oversight, there is none. Governments don't have access. The entire thing is internalized and run by these corporate entities, which means that we, the public, simply have to trust that equal enforcement is taking place with rigorous security and fail-safe parameters, which is probably not happening. As a side note, the taxonomy of what they consider to be terrorist content originally started with a United Nations consolidated sanctions list, but in 2021, there was a report compiled which made clear that this cabal of companies, I don't know if that's the right word, but it seems to fit right now, was going to radically expand what they classify as terrorist material. 
Effectively, a group of powerful technology and social media giants with no governmental oversight, therefore no oversight by the people, with any sort of voting framework that is not predicated directly on personal wealth, is making unilateral decisions on what is and is not allowed to grow and thrive online. That's fine if it really does only target radical and damaging content, but yeah, it probably doesn't. The lawsuit alleges that over 21,000 adult entertainment models were having their content fed into this hash system, this shared database of terrorist material that would then be throttled down, and the result was that OnlyFans was able to restrict the user-based growth of their competitors so heavily that there was no alternative other than total domination of the space. Now, one thing to also understand is that the four powerhouse founders and also funding members of the GIFCT are not the only members. Over a hundred companies in the tech world, such as Dropbox, Amazon, Pinterest, Discord, WordPress, Tumblr, WhatsApp, and more, many more, are all members of that same framework. In a 2021 transparency report, it was outlined that there are something like 300,000 hashes in the system right now, 77% of which are classified as glorification of terrorist actions. As far as I can tell, that is the category that bribed Meta employees, allegedly bribed Meta employees, were adding internet models and adult performers to, with the content that they had posted, to result in cross-pollination of the digital fingerprint, crushing the ability for these models to gain a following. Now, if we want to go down the based as fuck route, I don't really care. The shit that these models do on that kind of platform, the predatory nature of how they manipulate their audience and the degradation it perpetuates on modern society, make me totally unsympathetic to their plight. I just don't care. That kind of stuff should be gotten rid of on most public-facing platforms and areas, but when you really think about what this lawsuit represents, things are a little bit more complicated. A database of unregulated, non-public, and zero-oversight digital fingerprints is used to throttle down content all across the internet for unspecified reasons. The goal, the front-facing claim at least, of this coalition is to curb terrorist content and stop it from spreading. However, content that clearly does not meet their criteria, their as of yet non-expanded criteria at least, was allegedly being fed directly into their system, affecting tens of thousands of people, thereby restricting their online growth because an adult entertainment website wanted to crush its competitors and bribed individual employees to make that happen. It's that old saying, right? If you don't support someone and something bad happens to them, and then the same bad thing happens to you, but you didn't support the person before because you didn't like them, well, then you have no right to complain. So it's the idea that I may not care about OnlyFans models being suppressed into oblivion online, but the fact that it can happen in the framework by which it allegedly is happening, that's the stuff that we need to care about. Think about this. If OnlyFans is bribing employees of a different company to throttle down competing models all across the internet, why would it not be possible that political activist organizations with far more money, intensity, and power are somehow bribing their own set of contacts to throttle down and suppress their opposition? OnlyFans doing this and somehow being tied to Facebook and terrorism watch lists is absurd and even a bit comical. But the broader implications of them being able to even do this at all, if they have, is horrifying. Here, this isn't exactly related, but it shows just how monumentally corrupt and broken the entire thing actually is. There was this OnlyFans model who went on the No Jumper podcast. Famous podcast, pretty cool most of the time, standard, whatever. Well, she had been banned on Instagram. Okay, normal, people get banned all the time, fine. But to get it back, to get that account back, she started locating Facebook employees on LinkedIn, sleeping with them, and was able to get her account unbanned several times. It seems like the meta employees are pretty terrible. This part should be clearly labeled as allegations only, but the lawsuit contains a proposed pipeline for all of this, which I found rather interesting. Yes, I read pretty much the entire lawsuit. The documents allege that OnlyFans' parent organization, Phoenix International, produced payments through an unnamed Hong Kong subsidiary office, which then ultimately landed inside bank accounts in the Philippines set up by corrupt Meta employees. The phrase, on information and belief, in quotes, by the way, which appears all over this court case, is lawyer snake speak for, we think this is true, but we don't actually know, so take that for what you will. However, insinuating that there is a suspected pipeline under scrutiny is a step that seems to be designed to either bolster credibility or just completely bluff. I'm not sure which one. One final thing here. I have made it seem like, perhaps, that I full-on believe the lawsuit is true, but I don't want to, I, I really don't want to end like that. I don't want that to be the final takeaway here. In 2018, which aligns with a claim by the lawsuit that huge numbers of adult entertainment models were being banned online through various platforms, there was a pair of laws called SESTA and FOSTA. 
These were aimed at curbing sex trafficking, but had very, very large ramifications for the online adult entertainment world. The lawsuit is right. A lot of people were banned during the fallout from those laws at that time, but that really doesn't have anything to do with OnlyFans or Facebook. So the idea that all of this stuff is a giant conspiracy is a little bit hard to believe. Bottom line, this lawsuit itself is extremely interesting, but not because of the parties involved, more so the implication and sanitary exposure of a system that has existed for years and may have been abused here, but is almost certainly abused in a myriad of ways by other parties for other reasons against competing or opposing groups. I don't know if the claims in this particular case are legitimate, but that hash system and the corporate cartel behind it is pretty eye-opening. I would be willing to bet a lot of people are caught up in these private company lists becoming unable to engage with the online world properly as a result of that. In the end, I don't really know, but it was a fun topic to research and learn about, so if you want to support the channel, there are links down below. Hopefully I'm not suppressed on social media, haha. -ha. There's merch, locals, Patreon, Odyssey, a YouTube platform alternative, also another YouTuber to check out, etc, etc, but I'll cut it there and stop rambling. As always, thank you all for watching, and have a nice night.